Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CCT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to Not Perfect Zen. I hope you're doing well. I am very grateful for Zentangle in my life. I'm grateful to be able to share it with you, and I'm grateful for this holiday season. I've been focusing on holiday type tiles, but um, I thought I'd do something different. It looks like spring <laughs> on this tile, but these happen to be three new patterns that have come out recently, and so I wanted to share them with you. Um, this one is called Rome, and it's by Li Shan Su. I guess I'm not sure how to say that one. This one is called Frozen Nandini by Elizabeth Hillerud, CZT. And the third one is called Vanessa. And it is by Daniela Midalanis. And I believe, yeah, this one is on the Mustercal site. And for the step outs for these other two, you can find them at tanglepatterns.com. And um, Elizabeth is also known as Zingoala or Zingola, I'm not sure, on Instagram, in case you want to see more of her work. All right. Um, I am going to be using one of my tiles that have the holes up here for the disc bound system and I put them into this. If you're interested, there will be in the description below the video a link to more information on that. <clears throat> this is four inches across by four and a half. Of course, you can make your tile any size you would like and also any color. This has a little bit of watercolor on the back of it. Um, this is my favorite thing to do. It's just very light touch of color on my tiles. All right, so we are gonna start with uh, supplies you need. This is a Micron 01. The paint is coming off the barrel of this pen, but it's still working, so I'm gonna keep using it. So a Micron 01 possibly a graphite pencil, a blending stump, and I don't think I'll need the eraser, but I always keep one handy. So I'm going to start with the four corner dots. This paper is very close to the paper on the Zentangle tiles. This is called Fabriano Tiepolo, and I got it from Dick Blick online, and they also have paper similar to this in my local art store, and it's 22 inches by 30 inches, and I used to buy it that way and cut it a lot. I don't do that so much anymore. I still have some that uh, I can cut into tiles. Okay, so here I have my four corner dots and a border. I'm not going to put a string. I am going to build this little cute wall. And um, she said that when she made this, she was actually just trying to come up with a, a grid where she could put some tangle patterns inside of that grid, and she came up with that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ink over my um, line here at the bottom, and then I think I'll go ahead and echo that. Aura. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to do another 
doesn't have to be perfect kind of line, a little bit wavy. And then we're going to R that one. And then we'll put one more above that. And R it also. And then I'm going to put a line on my border here and on this side also. Okay, so for this pattern, she puts these wide pillars, I guess would be the best way to describe it for me, or columns, and we're gonna do that first. So just, <clears throat> this is all random. I'm gonna put two here, move over a little bit. Another wide one. I'm not trying to make rectangle or square. We're just putting these in randomly. Put one over here. Okay, so like I said, these are just random. <clears throat> and now we're gonna put another set of lines between these. Just turn your tile to make it easy for your hand. It doesn't have to follow the, the lines that you have here. This is kind of like a wonky brick wall. And we are going behind our columns. And just like our original lines, we are making two. So we're adding an aura. All right, same thing down here on the bottom. And you don't have to make these wavy. You can make them straight if you want them to. So I'm just following how she does her step out. Okay, so now we have all of our lines that we need to go that way. And then we just randomly add some more lines going down, but they're going to be thin, okay? They're not gonna be as wide as these columns, they'll be more like the lines that we just put. And again, we just put them randomly. And they don't have to line up. So I'm going to move this one over a little bit. And then just continue across to put these wherever you would like. You can go all the way like that on one if you want. You can leave them long like a rectangle. Let's see, I think I'll put one down here. 
one here. I think I'll leave that one open. Don't even worry about it. Just put some lines. I started doing Project Pack 19 this week. And um, being the perfectionist that I am trying to overcome, I worry about, is mine going to look as good as Molly's or Maria or Rick's? And I have to constantly tell myself to stop worrying. This is not a contest. We're not being graded. We're just doing this for fun. Okay. All right. So now we have our lines. And the next thing that we're going to do is to just round all of the corners. And I'm going to try to make this not take too terribly long. I don't fast forward on my videos. So if this is slow for you, once you figure out what I'm doing, you're more than welcome to either speed this up or move it forward to the next part of the video. It uh, really stresses me to watch a video that is sped up, especially the ones that the whole thing is fast. I just can't do it. And so I've never tried to change the speed on mine. And I'm just going to keep going to each of these corners and just add a little bit of rounding. Um, and at the same time, if this is too fast for you, there is a way in YouTube to slow it down if needed. Sometimes I feel like these are a little bit sloppy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as my eyes get older, I find that I'm not able to do quite as much smooth detail as I used to, and that's okay. I'm not doing this again to be graded. I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it. And we are encouraged by the Zentangle team again and again to just relax and enjoy these patterns. Many times I go to the Mosaic app and find patterns that I really like, or tiles rather, and zoom in on them. And guess what? They're not perfect. And this is not meant to be perfect. Okay. This does take a little bit of time. We are still enjoying warm weather while some people here in the States are getting five feet of snow. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hope everyone stays safe. And Canada also, I'm sure, is getting a lot of snow right now. I grew up in the western part of Texas here in the U.S., and we would get snow maybe once or twice a year, and we loved it. My mom would go out early 
in the morning before anybody got up. She wouldn't let us go out and get in the snow until she had a chance to go out and get some. And she would put it in a bowl and put it in the freezer. And then she would make what she called snow ice cream. And I can't tell you how she did it. It's been too long. <laughs> but I know we loved it. It was just so cool once a year to have snow ice cream. Remember to relax your hands. When you're doing these repetitive things, well, at least for me, I tend to kind of grip the pin harder than I should. So just relax your hand. Relax your shoulders. <clears throat> And like I said, I'm doing this kind of fast, so it's not going to look perfectly neat. But I can go back afterwards and smooth these out a little bit more. I just think this makes a really cool little wall. And if you did it big like she was talking about. Um, you could put other patterns inside of it. You could put fragments inside of it. I've enjoyed playing around with fragments again. Okay, we're almost there. I believe Elizabeth is in Spain. And I really appreciate the Spanish tanglers who did so much during the beginning of the pandemic. They offered free uh, Instagram videos every day. It wasn't always the same person, but there was always a video that you could watch during that beginning of the pandemic and the lockdown and that was just really cool I met some awesome people that way okay like I said mine's not perfect and that's perfectly fine okay so the next pattern I'm going to put on here I'm actually going to kind of blend these but um, this one is frozen Nandini, and she said that she got this pattern by combining two other patterns that she had, and it's a simple pattern to do. We're just going to start anywhere on here, and let's just put a stem that goes up, and at the top of that stem, in the, the pattern that she said this one came from, the stems went out like this, and at the end was almost like a little fescue type thing. Okay. 
And I didn't see that actually happening in her step out. But if you wanted to, you could put just a little tip on there. And then we're going to do a circle <clears throat> of dots. Zoom in a little bit here. OK. So we're going to make a circle of dots. And then we're just going to do stippling, which is just tapping your pin a little bit heavier on the bottom, and then just very lightly at the top. <clears throat> OK. We're going to do a stem that comes out this way. And then put our dots around. And just tap, tap, tap. You can make the outside of it a little bit darker if you want. But put most of your little taps down here at the bottom. And then add a little bit of weighting at the, where the stems connect. Right. So we're just going to continue to add a few of these. I'm going to come down a little bit. Put my circle of dots. If you want to, you can make these a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger. And then go back and start adding your stippling with just a little bit up here in the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can come off of this one. And then add your little bit of weighting. Stem. Okay. And don't push down real hard when you do this stippling. You don't want to push the tip of your pen. Looks like mine is. <laughs> I've used this one for a while, so mine is going in. But be careful to not push too hard on the tip of your pen. Hmm. I just really like the effect of this pattern. And it's really easy. Easy to do, easy to remember. All right, so we have several on here. And I want to go ahead and show you this one because I want to add these little Vanessa patterns in with this and not necessarily a whole line of them by themselves. Uh, on the back, I want to show you that initially her pattern starts with a dot and then she put like a, a heart with not a big crease in the middle. And then another part with just kind of a wavy top to it. And then 
she put a tip here and then you could just kind of fill that one in fill this one in however you would like okay uh, the way that I've seen it done also is this is a little bigger this one's extended down a little bit this is more like the originals and then this is kind of a variation so I'm going to start by putting one right here. So we're going to have our dot. And then just a wave. And then come back down. And then I'm going to have this one come down a little bit longer. And have that side a little bit longer. And come back up the stem. And for this, kind of echo that part. And it makes it look more like a butterfly. And then however you want to do it, we're just going to add a little bit of cross hatching, very lightly, to make that a little bit darker. And then if you want, you can put a couple of lines coming down. This one, you could add, you know, little dots, however you want to do it for a little butterfly. Ooh, excuse me. So there we have our first little branch with the frozen Andini and Vanessa. So let's come back over here and add another one. And this one is going to go out in this direction. Yeah, my pen is definitely getting near the end of its life. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the tip on here. And make my little ball of circles or dots not necessarily circles okay and again make it a little bit darker along the bottom okay another one come up and just do this randomly. You don't have to try to follow me exactly. And if it helps, just watch the video first and then go back. <laughs> That's what I tend to do. If I'm watching a recording, I'll watch it through and then I'll come back and create the tile while I'm watching it the second time. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of weighting at the bottom here. And here I'm just going to have something come out, a little fescue. And I'm going to put a little butterfly on there. And to do a tiny butterfly, you can just do two of the little hearts. Okay. So a simple way to do that same pattern, which was uh, something that she had in her step out. And then just 
keep randomly adding more of the frozen Nandini. I'm not sure if that is an actual, I know Nandini is a flower, but um, like I said, I think frozen Nandini was a combination of another pattern that she called frozen something. <laughs> I should have looked that up before I started this, but um, anyway, I think they're both fun and a uh, cool combination. And here in the south, we still have some monarch butterflies that are hanging around. And um, last year, I actually raised monarch butterflies. We were trying to help in whatever way we could. We would, my grandchildren would help me get the find the eggs on the leaves of the milkweed and we would uh, bring them in and I had some little cages that uh, I kept the caterpillars in and separate little place for the worms and uh, we really enjoyed it we learned a lot okay so I think just randomly you could add some little fescues to fill in some of the space. And I'm just rounding the bottom of these since we've done it on this other stuff. Fescue is always a fun little filler. I'm sorry, but I lost my internet connection. So it um, took me a few minutes to get it back. And I'm not sure where I was, but I think I was just adding these little fescues. Um, can add another little fescue here. With another little butterfly and again on these your little dot and just simply a couple of little wings like that if you want to put something that looks like the head on it you can and then however you might want to decorate a little butterfly okay and then i'm going to add one like this down here it's sitting on the wall so again we're just going to start with a dot and this one is going to be the mama <laughs> she's kind of big and then we're going to come down. Like that. And then this side is going to come up and kind of echo our aura, what we already had there. And then just very gently touching the paper to add some cross hatching there. You can aura inside of this. Okay. You could do the same thing on this part of the butterfly. Just however you think you'd like to do it. Okay. If you wanted to 
we could put a couple of little antenna <laughs> on there. Okay, so just very simple patterns, fun and easy to do. As far as shading, you can put, uh, just going to put like a little, a little C inside of each of these. And where it's a rectangle, we'll make it go more of the way across. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, sorry about the wiggle. It takes a while for it to stop. Okay, and I'm just using the side of my pencil and just very gently touching it. I'm not trying to make a mark. Let me show you on the back real quick. When you're doing shading, if you use the tip of your pencil, especially if it's sharp, okay, you get a sharp line. If you'll use the side of your pencil, you get more of a soft line. And then when you try to let me clean this off a little bit. Okay, so then when you come back and try to soften this, you see how you still have a sharp line? But when you're using the side of your pencil, and then you go to blend it, see how much better that blends? Okay, so that's why I'm telling you we want to use the side of our pencil. And then we're just softly going down on each one of these and add just a little bit of graphite. Looks more like an L. So we're making this look kind of like a wall made out of stones. Okay, now we're going to get our blending stump and then we're just going to soften each one of those. Uh -uh. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my dog from barking. Generally, when I'm doing this, she just stays in her little bed. Her name is Coco. And she is probably a pit bull mixed with American Staffordshire Terrier. She is a rescue, about three years old. Okay. So there's our little brick walls. Um, I'm not going to add any shading up here necessarily. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, put a little bit where we've put that cross hatching. Or you could use what's on your blending stump to change the color of the wings on here if you want to. Uh, if you wanted to, you could come back in here and add graphite. Let me show you. Let's do it on one of them. So if I put just a little bit of graphite here and then blend it. So that's how that would look. All right. So... There we go. Very simple patterns and a simple tile. And I look forward to seeing what you can do with it. Um, I keep forgetting to show 
if you want to use a hashtag, please just put Barbara Langston. CZT, and I will find what you've done. Okay, here. <laughs> After I wrote that down, I found it. Um, for Instagram, at BBL Tangles. And on Facebook, I'm Barbara Buford Langston CZT. All right. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you liked it. There's Vanessa, Rosen. Nandini and Rome. All right. I hope that uh, you've had a great weekend and I will see you next time. Oh, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you hadn't. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.